What exactly is Project Necromancer? In Chapter 23 of The Mandalorian, the Shadow Council was revealed to us, a collection of high-ranking Imperial officials which form the remnant of the Empire and who make the decisions necessary to ensure its survival. In this important two-minute meeting, we got several name drops which indicate the future of Star Wars and the timeline moving forward. Most specifically, the Praetorian Guards, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and the project known as Necromancer. We talked earlier about the Praetorians as well as Grand Admiral Thrawn, but in this holocron, we wanted to take a stab at the mysterious Project Necromancer. The project was mentioned a few times, specifically when Moff Gideon was addressing Commandant Hux, and in relation to the cloning of Dr. Pershing's research. We can take a few wild guesses as to what Project Necromancer actually is, but it was this specific name they chose for the project that captured our attention, and we believe we can narrow it down. Resurrection from the dead in the Star Wars universe always comes with certain stipulations, and usually with a heavy price. Sometimes things go wrong. So in this holocron, we are going to take a look at Project Necromancer and how without Dr. Pershing's research, this project could go horribly wrong. Cloning in Star Wars has been really pushed to the forefront of storytelling in recent years. It got a huge spotlight in Season 2 of The Bad Batch when Omega was taken captive in order to force Nala Se to reveal the Kaminoan cloning process to the Empire. It seems the Empire is extremely interested in cloning, despite the fact that they actively work to shut it down completely and destroy all traces of it on Kamino. This story continued in The Mandalorian, when Dr. Pershing used the Kaminoan cloning techniques and combined it with his own research in order to create a subject, a subject that successfully derives genetic advantages from two different specimens, in essence, cloning force sensitives. It is clear to us that Project Necromancer could be the code name for Palpatine's return, creating a clone body for him to inhabit by using essence transfer, or this could even be the code for the creation of Supreme Leader Snoke, as we saw all of Snoke's clones on Exegol. While this is a very obvious theory, we have one single fact that would completely refute this from being the case. In the sequel trilogy, General Hux apparently knew nothing about Palpatine's return, unless he was feigning ignorance the whole time about Snoke's true identity and Palpatine's existence. Then, Project Necromancer, which General Hux's father was personally overseeing, cannot possibly be the return of Palpatine. That, of course, also assuming that Commandant Hux didn't hide Project Necromancer from his son. But if this is not the case, the Empire's cooking up something else entirely, and it could be big trouble if they do not have the research of Dr. Pershing. Research that Moff Gideon wants to keep away from Hux for a very strange and important reason. We discover in the meeting that Gideon has been keeping his research away from Hux on Navarro in order to conduct his own experiments, and then Gideon ensures that Pershing's brain got fried in the Mind Flayer on Coruscant, so his research could never be recovered and used by Hux for Project Necromancer. So either Gideon doesn't want Palpatine to be resurrected, or there is something else about Project Necromancer that Gideon may be trying to avoid, or perhaps even trying to cause. Moff Gideon may be trying to force Hux to move forward with Project Necromancer and accidentally achieve a bioweapon to use against the New Republic. And what exactly is this bioweapon? Well, it's Project Blackwing. The Blackwing virus, also known as Imperial Bioweapon Project I-71A, is a virus ordered by the Emperor using ancient Sith alchemical knowledge. The project was undertaken on an Imperial Star Destroyer that served as a mobile research base, and it was conducted out in the unknown regions where it would not be located. The bioweapon was meant to be engineered to use against the Rebel Alliance in order to bring a swift end to the Galactic Civil War. However, an accident occurred on the Star Destroyer which caused an entire outbreak of the virus, which completely took over the ship. The zombified corpses of all of those that once resided on the ship got the nickname of the Death Troopers. In fact, the rumors of the horrors of the Blackwing virus started to spread through whispers of the Empire, but because the project was completely top secret, the Emperor decided to give the name Death Troopers to an elite stormtrooper branch that was being developed in order to take suspicion away from the virus itself, which of course is where we get the name of the Black Armored Death Troopers that were first introduced to us in Rogue One, and thus the rumors of the Blackwing virus were forever silenced. This project was one of the most horrific and depraved things that the Empire has ever come up with and ever done, and it is a blessed thing that this terrible bioweapon only ever affected a single Star Destroyer and didn't cause an entire galaxy-wide outbreak. Not again. 
Yes, you heard us right. We said again. This wasn't the first time that the undead caused an outbreak in the galaxy. To know all about this, we'd have to travel back to the year 3645 BBY, in a time period known as the Inter-Sith Wars, a time that was right between the Old Sith Wars and the beginning of the New Sith Wars. We can thank the research of a Sith Lord by the name of Darth Scabarus, who, along with the help of another Sith Lord named Darth Dreer, together they created something that all Sith Lords want, a potion that was supposed to grant them immortality. This project used a specific plant from the Murakami Orchid, which was actually Force-sensitive and had a high midichlorian count. It was said to bond with only people who had a similar concentration of midichlorians, such as Jedi or Sith. But it was this high concentration of midichlorians that made it a danger to non-Force sensitives. The formula created using this orchid was supposed to give Darth Scabarus eternal life, but an accident caused it to raise the dead back from where they came. This side effect was taken advantage of by Scabarus, who attempted to control an army of the undead using mind control. However, this did not go as planned as Scabarus was killed by his apprentice, causing the undead to run rampant. Entire planets had to be quarantined, including that of Dathomir, until the virus could be tracked down and destroyed by the Jedi. But why is this so important? Well, we know that the formula was found by the Emperor while he was looting the Jedi archives, and he repurposed this event into Project Blackwing. Going back even further, one of the first Sith kings, Doth Kagrosh, can be credited for the creation of the first reanimated dead spell. Which isn't surprising, as Doth Kagrosh was known as the greatest Sith sorcerer that ever lived. After its inception, he named the spell Tesai Wanaka Hoyakut, and it was this spell that he raised his undead army and took over all of Korriban, thus establishing the rule of Grosh. This was then inherited by Scabarus and passed down to Sidious, the Emperor. And now, we come full circle back to Project Necromancer. Obviously, there is a possibility that Project Necromancer has absolutely nothing to do with the Blackwing virus. However, we do know that the Empire was planning to do something with it, and Necromancer is a curious name for such a project, as Necromancers are known for bringing the dead back to life. Is it possible and even likely that this refers to the resurrection of Palpatine and the creation of Snoke? Yes, but would it be interesting if this is referring to the canon Blackwing virus? Is it possible that Moff Gideon and maybe Thrawn could spawn a potential Blackwing virus into motion if Hux is deprived of Pershing's research? Messing with genetics is hardly ever a good idea, especially when dealing with the Force. Darth Plagueis proved such a thing, as the Force hated him as a result. Raising the dead and crossbreeding specimens upsets the natural order of the Force, and the Force will retaliate. So all we can do is watch it unfold. But what do you think, my friends? Do you think Project Necromancer has anything to do with undead reanimation? Or do you believe that it is the way that somehow Palpatine returned? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. And as always, my friends, may the Force be with you and have a great day.